we were reflecting on what we um, what we are as an organisation, what motivates us, and what drives us, and two of the sort of key features of, of our business is that we are a um, a cooperative, and uh, the nature of the technology we use. And we were looking at our motivations for what we do, and a lot of them uh, were shared motivations of these two movements. Um, notions of uh, openness and transparency, uh, collaborative behaviour, um, freedom. equality, freedom um, and participation uh, were, were, were common to both the uh, free and open source software movements and the cooperative movement. And, um, and it struck us that they're such natural bedfellows that perhaps we should um, evangelise a bit more about those points and try and um, we're very excited to come to the Cooperative um, United uh, Conference anyway but we, we thought it was an opportunity to perhaps uh, share this perspective and see if we could um, push the message of using this, this, uh, this technology. So the benefits are manyfold. Um, yeah, I mean, I suppose you know the, the business case benefits are, are uh, around you know, no license fee, so free at the point of you know, free as in beer, free as in gratis. And you're not paying for the license fee of the software, uh, but also free as in freedom, um, as in you are free to look at the source code, change the source code, develop it. One, you're not locked into proprietary software vendors um, with your software. So, uh, so it, it can save a lot of money, but also it can save a lot of restrictions and sort of open up your, your development. Um, Innovation is a, it's a great one. Kind of in, in my my industry, which is computer graphics, that's where I've, I've come from. Uh, the the main applications that are used um, to create digital graphic content for movies and games and stuff, uh, they're all now nearly all controlled by one one company. Uh, and uh, uh, trying to get new features developed that are key to your workflow are, are really hard because um, yeah, that there's just there's no easy way for you to um, push push your, your needs for the product. Where and there's a and a Blender is a open free and open source software um, application for the computer graphics world. And they are going to be, if you if you need a feature, you just get together with other people who um, can help you do it, and you can just extend the software yourself. So you're you don't you're not at the mercy of a proprietary. Um, Producer, you can. It, it is your software. You can go and get stuck in, uh, and, and make the extensions, make the changes. Uh, so that's for me very powerful, and it's it's one of the reasons why I think the, uh, in this in this case, the Blender is is, is growing as a, as a powerful rival to the proprietary packages. So I think what is obvious is that the the success stories for free and open source software have been more sort of framework and infrastructure. So the the, the, the geek, it's almost geek, um, driven. Mm -hmm. uh, where, the, where the techies are the consumers of the products. So I think all the leading software languages, not most of the leading languages in which you write software are, are free. Um, but the, the, there aren't that many sort of big success cases for consumer products, sort of f finished mm -hmm. products that consumers um, use, um, which I think is because it's a, it's a harder business model um, to uh, develop that kind of software as free and open source, uh, which I think is one of the challenges that, that we have. Um, so, so, so the web development tools are great, that sort of, they're like, um, uh, and maybe you could come, why do you think that web development tools have been success, so successful as, as free and open source tools? It's a good question. I mean, maybe it's the speed of change of, of the web development uh, environment, you know, the over the last 10 years, you know, the growth of the online uh, world and, and business and, and um, uh, that has, but, uh, yeah, it's a bit chicken and egg, I suppose, isn't it? Because it's, it's, it, I mean, tools like Drupal, which is the web development framework that we work in, uh, is built on open source technologies like PHP, a scripting language, and MySQL, database language, um, and, you know, Apache web server, and these, these are the foundations on, on which Drupal has, has built. So it's kind of, there are other infrastructure technologies on top of which a, a framework has been built uh, following on from you know, the, the open source ethos. And then now people start to use that as a product um, because people want to make websites and, and 
obviously it's it's free to download and you can start to change it and it's, it's got all of this flexibility built into it so maybe that's part of the reason and, and the innovation I think the community was was um, was right in there when people started wanting to use content management uh, systems and frameworks and the, these technologies were there in the open source community quite early on yeah and and I guess, like you say, like, I mean, because it is quite a, a, a sort of tech-led and perhaps a geek kind of, you know, sort of developer-led uh, um, sort of culture initially, that um, uh, larger um, larger projects come along, sort of, you know, like I don't know, Whitehouse.gov and Examiner.com, you know, big websites which decided to use Drupal as their infrastructure, yeah. um, and they weren't scared to throw additional resources at changing it or developing new modules to answer their particular problems or or to develop migration of you know millions of users from from an old system to a new system, um, and because it is open source, because it has that flexibility, you know, uh, forward thinking uh, companies can can see the advantages of that flexibility, and then it becomes ever more popular. And then other organisations like ourselves, you know, see they're using Drupal. They're using Drupal. You know, these large organisations are using open source software. You know, why, why, why shouldn't yeah. we use it? Um, so, so yeah. One of the things I is that it's when there's not a big business need to control the software. I think an awful lot of software developers, um, particularly so at, at the most proprietary end of the spectrum, kind of they've got huge. Investment in actually is in contro controlling the distribution of of their tools or the, of their say their games, for example, mm -hmm. um, and uh, so when they really tie their income to the control of their software, um, that's you get the most proprietary sort of ecosystems. And how can um, you? But there's mean, less need for that. So, uh, say a newspaper doesn't need to control the extensions of Drupal. To make a newspaper, <coughs> yeah. So they can. It's, it's easy for them to release their control of any developments they make. No, absolutely. I think it's very difficult in the like the computer games industry, for example, to, to consider a business model around open source computer games. Yeah. Um, what would that business model be like? I mean, it's an interesting, interesting problem. Um, but I guess most of the cooperatives that we're talking about promoting open source software to, most of them are not developers and yeah. not. Uh, you know, uh, developing software on which they want to sell a license. Most of them are consumers of software, and so it is the consumers who really win with uh, you know large open source product, projects. Yeah, I think there was a, one of the stats in our presentation was something like sixty billion dollars per year is is yeah. uh, you know saved by consumers and potentially lost by proprietary software developers yeah. uh, in terms of license fees, which is a massive saving to the small businesses who are the consumers of, the, of those software. So even just on a financial basis, it makes, it makes a lot of sense as a consumer. So maybe the business models need to sort of move away from trying to, yeah, to, to re realizing that, and communicating that. So, so saying to the corporate movement, kind of, your your members are saving this amount of money because this, they're, they're benefiting from all this free development, um, and finding ways for them to just be aware of that first, and then find other ways of supporting. Exactly. If, if all of the money that we were spending on license fees for our you know, infrastructure and, and desktops and email systems and whatever were spent on, uh, you know, support and new development of said software, yeah. and we're all doing that across the world, then we're all con contributing to the development of better, faster, more secure, more flexible software for all of us. And so, you know, I mean, there's certainly business models around that where you're, you're paying a, a support fee to an organisation to help you with your software, which then, you know, that software help is freely distributed around everybody else who's using it. Um, like, we're not probably not recommending that every co-op should just drop all of their proprietary software right now and change over to open source, yeah. you know, or else you're not a co-op. Um, <laughs> yeah, that's a little yeah. harsh. Uh, but encouraging them to make small, ch more, small changes, you know, and, and be less reliant on proprietary software, I think, you know, strengthens the cooperative movement as a whole. Um, you know, increases the freedom and autonomy within which we can, we can operate. I mean, that freedom and autonomy principle five, four, um, I can't remember which one it is, <laughs> but that, that freedom and autonomy principle, which was freedom and autonomy from government, I mean, you know, some could argue that, you know, freedom and autonomy from proprietary mm. software vendors may also be, you know, part of that. Um, we want to sort of, yeah, maintain our freedom and our autonomy, which is kind of inbuilt into free and open source licenses. So. And from the education point of view, and of the 
when the largest sort of uh, software, if the largest software applications are hidden behind walls, uh, there's no way to actually sort of learn as, as, a, as a student how, how these things work. So it's only the existence of open source large uh, large projects that makes it possible for for people to learn without joining a large corporation mm -hmm. to find out how software works. So, it's, so open source is a key, it's, it's essential for education within software. Um, Which is also something that, you know, we, we need as a society, you know, we badly need more young people to be looking inside the software and improving it and, and writing, you know, the next generation of software. So, um, so yeah, if there's any small cooperatives out there watching who are interested in, uh, you know, how they can use, uh, uh, you know, make use of open free and open source software to further their uh, computing needs, um, do drop us a line. Um, you can uh, get us on Twitter at Agile Collective, which is spelled like that. <laughs> Don't know if you can see that. Um, or drop us a line on the email, info at agilecollective.com. Um, we'd be happy to, you know, further discussion and, uh, you know, push to, uh, to have our regional and national cooperative development agencies, you know, help provide a high level of support, uh, you know, for, uh, for cooperatives looking for this information. But, um, but I think, yeah, we need to start by writing some more, writing some more stuff down. Mm. That's someone also in the writing a paper. Someone who talked this morning also suggested an association with some sort of, of digital yes. professionals yeah. who were co ops. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, this is it. So, if there's other digital cooperatives out there, you know, who are interested in collaborating on this, you know, maybe forming a, a, a association or yeah. society of, uh, you know, digital cooperatives working with free and open source software you know, to promote that, um, then let's talk. Let's, let's see what we can do. Let's, uh, because again, you know, together there are more of us and uh, we can do more. Um, so, yeah.